Who gives this woman to marry this man? Wow, truly, truly beautiful. And sis, you look nice too. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Travis Havens and I'm Morgan's uncle. It is an absolute honor to officiate this wedding today. This is a special time of celebration that Morgan and Ryan will long remember. And because of this, they are grateful you are here today to share their joy. You are here because you have played an important role in their lives. On behalf of the bride and groom, thank you for being here. What greater thing for two people than to feel they are joined together, to strengthen each other in labor, to rest on each other in sorrow, to help each other in need, to share joy, and to be one with each other, whatever life has to offer. Morgan and Ryan, today begins a life of giving and sharing, nurturing and support, allowing each other the freedom to change and grow as individuals while developing your mutual spirit as time goes by. In the art of marriage, the little things are the big things. It is about establishing a relationship in which the independence is equal, the dependence is mutual, and the obligation is reciprocal. Today, your family and friends are gathered together to celebrate your union. Today we are privileged to witness two very dear friends, two exceptional and driven individuals committed to sharing a lifetime together. We will now have a reading by Emily Van Brandt, friend of the bride and matron of honor. Today's reading isn't one that you can find in any publication. That is because it was written by our groom. Here are some thoughts that Ryan shares on the topic of love. Love is so much more than some random euphoric feeling. And real love isn't always fluffy, cute, and cuddly. More often than not, real love has its sleeves rolled up, dirt and grime smeared on its arms, and sweat dripping down its forehead. Real love asks us to do hard things, to forgive one another, to support each other's dreams, to comfort in times of grief, or to care for family. Real love isn't easy, and it's nothing like the wedding day. It's far more meaningful and wonderful. No one falls in love by choice. It is by chance. No one stays in love by chance. It is by work. And no one falls out of love by chance. It is by choice. If you truly love someone, and they truly love you, commit to that love and plan on it being hard work. But. Also plan on it being the most rewarding work of your life. Thank you, Emily. I'll never forget the weekend that Morgan and Ryan asked me to get ordained and officiate their wedding. We were at Leanne's surprise 50th birthday party. They pulled me aside. I was honored and I, of course, I immediately said yes. I may have had a couple of adult beverages that evening. So I woke up the next morning and I was like, what in the world did I agree to? I don't consider myself to be shy, but I've certainly never done this before, and it is the biggest day of their life. And we all know how particular our Ryan can be. <laughs> Every time we've gotten together to plan the ceremony, he, not so subtly, reminds me it's his special day. No worries, Uncle Trav, it's just my special day. Fortunately, Morgan calmed him down Every time he got all worked up and reminded him, honey, it'll all be fine. <clears throat> After all, no bad days, right, Ryan? His Facebook, you got anybody? Oh, okay. <laughs> After I got ordained, we started planning. I looked at ceremonies, I gathered some ideas, some information. We'd meet to go over our thoughts and plans. Of course, we wanted to have something in the ceremony that was a personal story about our bride and groom. So naturally, I asked about the first time they met each other thought this may be a nice story to, sh to tell their close family and friends on their special day. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> Guess I'm looking at you, Tino. <laughs> 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 
Morgan started telling me what details she could remember. Apparently, they met at the lake, and again, adult beverages may have been involved. So she was having some difficulty put, piecing the story together. Ryan was helping with the details, and as it turns out, there wasn't much of the story we should probably tell during the ceremony. In fact, it's likely more of a story for the reception, maybe. After hearing how the foundation for this relationship started, I figured instead of telling more of their stories, we probably better turn to scripture. Actually, one scripture reading is probably not enough. <clears throat> so here is the scripture reading that the couple has chosen for Ryan's special day. 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Love does not demand its own way. Love is not irritable and it keeps no record of when it has been wronged. It is never glad about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. There are three things that will endure, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Morgan and Ryan, please stop looking at me and join hands. You are about to make your promises to one another. You will find that as you live by these vows over the years, investing your time, love, and commitment to one another, the happy times of your life will be twice as joyous because you'll share these joys in marriage. Do I pause there? No, you can keep going. <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> Just a minute. <laughs> Ryan, will you take Morgan, whose hand you hold, choosing her alone to be your lawfully wedded wife? Will you live with her in the state of true matrimony? Will you love her and comfort her through good times and bad, in sickness and in health, honoring her at all times and be faithful to her? I will. Morgan, will you take Ryan, whose hand you hold, choosing him alone to be your lawfully wedded husband? Will you live with him in the state of true matrimony? Will you love him and comfort him through good times and bad, in sickness and in health, honoring him at all times and be faithful to him? I will. The couple has pre prepared their own vows that they will now exchange. Morgan. Sorry, I didn't memorize them first. <clears throat> I love you. I promise to be there for you and support you whenever you need. I promise to be strong when you are weak, care for you when you are ill, and comfort you when you're feeling blue. I promise to support your love for animals as long as they fit in the barn and we can afford the food. I promise to be loyal and to love you unconditionally no matter what your mood. I promise to give you everything I can for our marriage for it to be everything that we want it to be. I promise to travel the world and experience all the places you want to go, as long as I get to golf whenever you say so. <laughs> I will never give up when things are hard, and I will never stop rhyming in all your birthday cards. <laughs> you are everything I could ask for in a wife. I'm ready to get this thing started and get on with our life. Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I should have gone first because there's no way I could talk. <laughs> Ryan, two years ago you captured my heart by being the man who you are today. The sweetest, most loving, passionate, patient person I have ever met. As we stand here in front of our friends and family, I wanted to make these promises. I promise to support you and respect you as the person you are. I promise to not get upset when you want to go golfing all the time. <laughs> I promise to share with you my time and attention and to bring joy, adventure, and unconditional love to our marriage. I cannot wait to start our adventure together as husband and wife. I love you. Our couple will now exchange rings. 
Jeff remembered them. <laughs> The ring represents unending love. As often as either of you look upon these rings, may you be reminded of this moment and the love you have promised to one another. Ryan, please place this ring on Morgan's finger and repeat after me. Morgan, I give you this ring. Morgan, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my love. As a symbol of my love. I am choosing to share my life's journey with you. I'm choosing to share my life's journey with you. I give you this ring with my pledge. I give you this ring with my pledge. To love you today, tomorrow, always, and forever. Ryan, do you take Morgan to be your wife? I do. Morgan, please place this ring on Ryan's finger and repeat after me. Ryan, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my love, I am choosing to share my life's journey with you. I am choosing to share my life's journey with you. I give you this ring with my pledge. I give you this ring with my pledge. To love you today, tomorrow, always, and forever. To love you today, tomorrow, always, and forever. Nailed it. <laughs> Morgan, you take Ryan to be your husband. Morgan and Ryan, I want to wish you both much love and happiness as you begin your new journey. Remember to keep lots of laughter in your life, and love will never be far behind. Now, I can't help but give you a little advice. After all, I am holding the microphone. Actually, the first bit of advice comes from your youngest bridesmaid, Morgan's little cousin, Cameron Havens. I'll try not to grab your collar like she does from time to time. <laughs> Ryan, since you're going to marry our farm girl, you better toughen up and learn to love horses. <laughs> and Ryan, as I promised, I won't mention that she usually also calls you a sissy lala due to your fear of horses. I will not bring that up. <clears throat> Seriously though, my advice is certainly not coming from an expert. It's coming from someone that after almost 13 years of marriage has learned a few things, mainly the hard way, and has a long way to go. I always thought I was a good communicator. As I stated earlier, I'm not shy. I can express myself verbally and in written form. I studied communication and journalism. I've worked with people for a long time. However, my wife will tell you, and she has kindly pointed it out to me a time or two, I could use some work on listening. However, it's really more than that. A successful marriage needs more than just talking and listening. What I'm working on, and again have a ways to go, is being ever present. Being ever present is not is truly removing distractions, listening and seeking to understand before expressing your thoughts and views. Now I don't just mean putting down your phone and turning off the good t or turning off the TV, however that is a good start. I mean being ever present and not thinking and planning your next thought. Although I'm not there yet, I can give you a great example. The example many of us had was Bunny and Rita Diver. Morgan's great-grandparents, my grandparents, they were ever-present, not just with each other, but with everyone they talked to and with everyone that entered their home. When you were talking with them, they were ever-present and they made you feel like you were the most important person in the world. And it wasn't an act. To them, at that moment, you were. So, although it's not easy, work on that. And if you can master being ever-present with each other and those you care deeply about, you can do what they did and be married 50 plus years. Then, after you're gone, you'll leave a legacy like they did that is still living on in all of us. Morgan and Ryan, may all that you are always be in love. May all that is love always be in you. May your love be as beautiful on each day you share as it is on this day of celebration. And may each day you share be as precious to you as the day you first fell in love. May you always see and encourage the best in each other. May the challenges life brings your way make your marriage even stronger. And may you always be each other's best friend and greatest love. Morgan and Ryan, you have pledged your faith to each other 
in the company of two wonderful families and your circle of friends. So, by the power vested in me by the state of Ohio and American Marriage Ministries, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Ryan, you may kiss your bride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to present for the first time Mr. and Mrs. Ryan Powell. school been friends for about I don't know what do you think couple years couple years, couple years. <laughs> but uh, we really started getting really close back when we were uh, about juniors seniors in high school and uh, a lot of it was because we went through so much together a lot of ups and downs a lot of people in and out of our lives a lot of tough times 
and we had a lot to relate to. And this guy's always been here for me. Um, I lost my dad when I was about 21 years old to lymphoma. And uh, this was somebody that was right by my side, always talking to me, kind of went through something very similar. So uh, we always had each other's back. And he always had something uplifting to say to me, keep me going, keep me moving. And uh, as we got older, uh, all of our friends started getting married and me and Rye, right next to each other. <laughs> last one's going, last one's going. And uh, so many good times, man. We've been through so much together. And I ended up moving out to California to try something different and kind of left Rye by, his side, by himself back there with everybody married and Rye was a single guy. And uh, while I was out there, he was always calling me every other week, talking to me and, you know, keeping me updated about how things are going. And when I was out there, I really missed my family and all my friends, all these guys next to me, all the people out there. And I really needed to come home and I really miss all, everybody back home, friends, family, this guy, really important to me. And it's funny, when I came back, I was really excited to see all my friends and family, but for some reason, this guy, the very first day I came home, you know, he's like, oh, you're coming home, yeah, yeah, where are you moving, oh, I'm going to move to MC, yeah, then right with me, man, uh, I'll be out there, and uh, first day we came back, we hung out, and it's like we never missed a beat, two years gone, and still hanging out every other day, there it is, the two single guys, still, still doing it, and uh, Right after I moved back, it just happened that there was a little uh, little sot at the P.L. Schmidt Carbide Tooling over there. Woo! Love you, Paul. Love you, Don. And uh, said, hey, I got, I got a little job opportunity for you. And uh, picked it right up. And we now run the company together with Paul and Don. And go figure best friends all through that all through that time and now we uh we talk about paths a lot how uh, our paths ended up where we're at right now and i think it's crazy and i'm honored to be sitting right here next to honestly i can call this guy a brother because he's been there for me my whole entire life and i love him like a brother and i'm so happy that he found somebody that makes him as happy and yeah <laughs> as happy as you did as happy as you did and I'm really happy for you guys. I love you like a brother, man. And I wouldn't I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. We've been through so much together. Seriously, you're like a brother, dude. I love you, man. And uh, yeah, I'm so happy for you guys. I'm Morgan. It's kind of funny, when me and Morgan first met, it was right when I was started uh, dating my girlfriend, Kylie, who's out there. You guys will see her tearing up this dance floor later. <laughs> love you, girl. And uh, right when I started, dating her is right when uh, Morgan and Ryan started dating so we were at work talking a lot about it you know we'd work together I'd go hang out with Kylie and he'd be with Morgan and it was funny because every day we'd come back to work and we'd talk about it and I could just tell he was head over heels for Morgan and I'd never met her I'd Tino's cousin but I still never ran across just talking all about how much he loves her and how great she is and I never got a chance to meet her and it just so happened, well, she reached out to all of us, and this is kind of when I really knew that Morgan was that special person for him. It was for Ryan's 30th birthday party. And she got a hold of everybody, our big group of friends that all graduated together were still so close. And she got a hold of everybody, and our group of friends is so tight-knit that it's kind of hard for a girl or a significant other to to come together with them because they feel so left out, out of the loop. And Morgan, she was a little shy at times, but uh, she actually did such a good job reaching out to everybody and planning this 30th birthday party. And uh, when we were doing that, this was when I knew she was, she was the one, is we were in the limo and we were all, it's about the third or fourth bar that we hit up on Ryan's 30th birthday party. And uh, she was really shy in the, in the beginning, the first couple bars, she was kind of, you know, just low key, low key. Well, as she started getting a little more friendly with a couple more adult beverages, the next thing I know, 
we're all sitting in this limo, 20 people packed, and Morgan's standing up, dancing on Ryan, just just having a blast with a big old smile on her face, and Ryan's right behind her going, yeah. And, and that's when I knew right then, I was like, man, this girl, she has, she just loves life, she's okay, she got through her filter, and, and that's, when it, that's when I knew, right then. And I, I love both of you guys, and I'm so happy for both of you. Um, so here's, cheers to both of these two, and a great future. I love you both, I'm so happy for both of you guys. I love you. Cousin Ryan. What can I say about Cousin Ryan? <laughs> you know, there is a lot of things that I could say about Cousin Ryan, but we're in our 30s now. We are very mature. We're all, all these people up here and some out there are going to show you on the dance floor tonight how mature we are. But uh, all joking aside, I sat down the other day and I tried to re remember the first time that Ryan and I had met her when we became friends. And to be honest with you, I could not remember that first time. It, it's been a long, long time. But the one thing I can tell you is I remember when Ryan and I became very, very good friends. Same thing with Jeff about sophomore, junior year. You know, unfortunately, uh, Jake had just, uh, you know, passed. And um, that kind of, uh, I think, built a strong relationship with Ryan and I and some other people standing up here. And, so it was kind of a joke growing up with Ryan and I, you know, we're, he's Italian, we're Italian, we always talked about being brothers and the family, you know, and uh, so when him and Morgan started dating, which Travis brought up and may or may have not been my fault, but we're here today, um, you know, we always had a joke growing up, like I said, Ryan was, I always said, was trying to sneak his way into the family, right, you know, just always trying to sneak his way in, if he wasn't at my house, I was at his house, you know, we were very tight growing up, and so when him and Morgan started dating, I started calling him Cousin Ryan, right? It was a big, you know, it was a big joke. You know, if you can't be a jerk to your best friend, who can you be a jerk to? So it was, you know, we have even little baby Nora was saying Cousin Ryan. We had it, you know, had it great. But, you know, I stand up here today, two years later, believe it or not, very, very humbled and honored. I mean, there's gentlemen sitting right here to my left. There's gentlemen sitting out there in the audience that could be sitting in my spot right now. And I'm very honored that I could be the best man for Ryan and my cousin Morgan. And so, uh, you know, I stand here today, like I said, very honored to be here and just very happy. I, I can't believe it. You know, Ryan is maybe the most genuine guy I've ever met in my life. Wears his uh, emotions on his sleeves, good or bad. And, you know, I'm just, I'm so happy that you two have found each other and, and uh, have found true love. So, true love, true love is blind. So, today, I want to say here, and we're going to make this official. I want everybody to raise their glasses. First of all, for Cousin Morgan and Cousin Ryan. Woo! But for all the family here in the building, I want to just officially welcome Ryan into the family. I love you, brother. Welcome. Oh, and put it on the wall. <laughs> us up one time um, when he was coming to pick me up from her house. He didn't even notice that it was her until halfway home. <laughs> Morgan, 
you've always been there for me, no matter what. Um, as we grew older, we never mo grew apart, even after I moved away. You've been my friend. You've been my sister, my confidant, my partner in crime, everything. You mean the world to me. Your, friend, your family is like my second family, and I feel the same <laughs> about you. <laughs> We always had the craziest times together. Even going like to Cedar Point, we always thought we were gonna die on the blue streak. <laughs> Every single time, we kind of told it rest in peace last time we were there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I couldn't be, I can imagine being anywhere but by your side tonight. Like, I've dreamed about this day for years. I mean, like I said, we were friends since we were three years old, and we always used to play house in your little clubhouse, and I just, I really couldn't imagine being anywhere but here tonight. And you know how much I love you. You mean the world to me. And I feel blessed to have you in my life. And Ryan, you should feel blessed to have her in your life, too. <laughs> She's in your hands now. And I know you're going to take great care of her. <laughs> I have absolutely no doubt you're going to take great care of her. You're such a great guy, and you, you're the type of person who can take her on adventures and take her around the world and even spoil her at times. But you know how to keep her grounded without keeping her from being the woman that she really is, you know, pigs and all. I think she even kind of turned you a little bit. <laughs> I've honestly never seen anyone make her so happy. And I can see it every time you look in her eyes. I mean, today, today has just been the best display of love that I have ever seen in my life. The way you two look at each other is just perfect. Sorry. I wish you two a world of happiness, and may your lives be filled with fort good fortune, love, and endless adventure. I love you guys. Congratulations. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm Emily number two. This one came along first. I just wanted to say we're all so excited to have you here tonight to celebrate the love that these two have for each other. Not to mention the fact that they gave us a great excuse to have a really good party. Um, I just hope you guys bear with me for a minute. I think I'm funnier than I am. And um, hi mom, um, I'm turning into you when it comes to emotions. So uh, if I cry, <laughs> just, just bear with it. Through the years, Morgan and I have always said while we have been sneaking bush light and electric lemonade that we would start our maid of honor speeches with, so this bitch. <laughs> well, this one upheld her end of the deal. So this bitch, let me tell you, <laughs> from the day that she decided we were going to be best friends, life has become quite the adventure. Morgan is one of those people that will push harder to be better than you thought you could be. She will push you out of your comfort zone and teach you new things. She will love you unconditionally, but does not sugarcoat anything. Her expectations of any relationship are not beyond what she would do herself. I am truly lucky to call her my best friend. I really wish I could stand here and tell you guys how I watched Morgan and Ryan meet the first time and knew it was love at first sight. I really, I think the story involves Morgan saying YOLO and Ryan still being interested. I wasn't there, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> what I can tell you for sure is that I saw a change in my best friend. I don't mean a change as in she wasn't herself anymore. She was more of herself than she's ever been. She grew as a person. 
Together, these two roll with the punches and they find the fun in everything. They aren't in puppy love. Morgan and Ryan are two people that know what they want to get out of life. And they found part of it in each other. The rest of it, they will find and accomplish together. And there is no greater love that I could have asked for for her. I have to take a break from crying. So Morgan, or Morgan, Ryan <laughs> took like six months to propose to her after he sent me a text in the middle of a work meeting to tell me that he bought a ring. And I just want you to imagine holding the greatest news ever from your best friend for six months. That's like half of a year. That's Christmas to June, all right? That's a really long time to not tell your best friend that she's going to get married someday, OK? <laughs> Morgan, here we are today. From crying into bottles of wine and boxes of tissues to laying across coolers pr to protect our beer. From making up not very nice songs about people that we really didn't like to being the best private investigator ever. <laughs> from teaching me how to drive a stick to shotgunning beers, from putting your belly button ring back in at the hospital to being elbow deep in a mama pig, from pigs in a blanket to your wedding day, I am beyond thankful that you asked me to be here with you. Ryan, I knew you were something special from the day I met you. You had open arms to all of Morgan's crazy friends and family. <laughs> you are beyond patient, which is a necessity in this adventure that you decided to start today. <laughs> you were the first guy to really get to know and understand what more makes Morgan tick and you loved it, you got involved. You asked genuine questions and you got to know each and every one of us. You have a way of making fe people feel comfortable and welcome in your presence. Most importantly, you love Morgan. You respect that she was first a daughter, a friend, a strong independent woman, dang it. <laughs> but she's now your wife, Ryan. You both truly get to have a best friend for life. The two of you got married today. And Ryan, I, d I don't know if Austin let you know this or not, but it's more of a buy one, get one, two, or four free kind of thing. <laughs> um, so the two of you made promises to each other, but as one of your new wives, I have a couple promises to make of my, my own. I promise to support your marriage. I promise that if either of you confides in me, that my only goal will be to make your relationship stronger than it was before. I promise to tell you if you're being crazy, if you're right, and especially if you're wrong. I promise to keep Morgan occupied when you want to golf. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of people today telling you not to go to bed angry, which is true. Or to, call, to always kiss goodnight, which is also true. Or maybe someone will be telling you that half of your shit isn't yours anymore, <laughs> which is also true. Morgan, the fact I have to give to you is that the best way to get most husbands to do something is to suggest that perhaps they're old, too old to do it. <laughs> what? The things that I want to tell both of you are that I am so proud of you. I am so excited for everything life has to give to you. There was, there was a toast that some very wise lady gave to me on my wedding day, and I want to share it with you. May your friends be many. May your troubles be few. May your sausages be long to the new mystery of Mrs. Powell.